NBC Sports presents the best of the National Football League, an interconference game. Today, from Bush Stadium, it's the Miami Dolphins versus the St. Louis Cardinals. Today's game is brought to you by Schlitz, the master brewer's brew. Just one taste and you'll know, behind every Schlitz is a man who knows his beer. And by Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like their outstanding value. And by Dial It National Sports. For the latest scores, updates, and sports news, interviews, and sports headliners. And by Allstate Insurance Company. You're in good hands with Allstate. Don Shula in his 19th year as an NFL head coach his team will go on defense to start things off as Jim Hannafin in his second year coaching the Big Red will have his Cardinals receiving the Cardinals in their white uniforms with red trim the Dolphins in their aqua jerseys with the white pants Back to receive Roy Green, number 25 in the middle, with Chuck Mitchell, 30, and Willard Harrell, 39, flanking him. Uba Von Shaman. Mr. Von Foot will kick it off. Hope you'll enjoy it wherever you are this afternoon. It's a short kick from Von Shaman coming up at the 17-yard line. On the far side, that was Willard Harrell to take it. Harrell returning it to the 29, where he was met by Don McNeil. Jim Hart, the great veteran, starts the quarterback with Otis and the Otis, as they call them. Bell, Tilly, and Combs, the receivers. The Cardinals without the great Mel Gray. He's on the injured reserve list. Dan Deerdorf, the perennial all-pro in that offensive line. First down from the 29-yard line. Tilly is set in a slot to the near side. Mark Bell in motion, and the first play is out to Tilly. Tilly getting outside, pulled down at the 34-yard line by Don McNeil. A little quick pitch to begin things. No question, Jay. I talked to Jimmy before the game, and they're going to work on that right side. They're gonna, he wants to throw to the right. I don't think they have a special. I don't think they have a special person in mind, but they do want to throw to the right side. We see the defensive line there: Benners, Baumhauer, and Barnett. Rodzinski, Roan, Dewey, and Gordon. And in the secondary, McNeil, Small, Blackwood, and Vesselu. It'll be second down and about four at the 34-yard line, a pickup of six. The handoff going to O.J. Anderson, and the Dolphins keying on him. The nose guard, Bob Baumhauer, coming over to make a fine play, big number 73. Great play by Baumhauer. He read it just tremendously, and he shut him down. The Dolphins need that today. They can't allow any, anything long on it today. If they want to start the season with all those young people, they got to do just what they did in a fine play. Third down coming, and about five. Let's call it third and four. A good look at Jim Hart. 37-year-old veteran. Wide receiver set left. A handoff goes to Anderson, and they don't do anything with him. Interesting call on third down. Very interesting, Jay. I'm kind of disappointed in that call. Maybe they just wanted to feel some certain plays out and get some keys early in the game. Tackle made by Ernest Roan, along with... John Besselow, hunting time for the Cardinals. Carl Birdsong, a rookie who beat out Larry Swider. Tommy Vigorito set to receive this punt. Low pass, Birdsong got it away, a wobbly kick. And it's taken by the up man, Kozlowski, in front of Vigorito. They almost collided there. Kozlowski is out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. Run out over there by the linebacker, Calvin Fabron. A 38-yard punt, a 7-yard return. As we look at the offensive unit for the Miami Dolphins, Woody Bennett starting. Uriel Harris, Nat Moore, and Ronnie Lee, the receivers. Mark Denard 
The three-year man from A&M in the center of that offensive line. First down at the 36-yard line. Bruce Hardy is now the tight end, number 84. They've got a double tight end set at the moment. Hand off to Woody Bennett. Yes, sir. Oh, they try Bennett, and Charlie Baker, the right side linebacker, comes up. Number 52 to make the play. The Cardinals with Pollard, Dawson at the nose, and Rush the Crush Brown. Favron, Carney, Williams, and Baker are the linebackers. And in the secondary, the great veteran Roger Worley. Now Hardy is out. Jimmy Cephalo is in there. Cephalo, 81, and Moore, 89, the wide receiver. Second down and nine from the 37. David Woodley's first pass is complete. Tony Nathan, first down. Nathan turns it into Cardinal territory at the 49-yard line. Stopped by Eric Williams, 55, and Calvin Favron, number 59. We see him going in motion. They just split the defensive backs, and he stepped right in there and hit the man. Great play. I'm, I'm happy to see them open the game up. 14-yard play, and the reception by Tony Nathan. Double tight end arrangement again. Ronnie Lee and Bruce Hardy are in there for the Dolphins. The pitch back coming to Tony Nathan, and the former Alabama star got maybe a yard. Trying to go to his right. One of the Cardinals picking it up. Number 59, Calvin Favron. The tackle credited to Eric Williams and Bob Pollard. There's a good look at Woodley. The Cardinal defensive unit. Led by Mike Dawson, a six-year veteran at nose tackle. Number one draft choice out of Arizona. Number 73, right in the middle of your screen. Rush Brown is out. Curtis Greer, 75, is at right end. It'll be second down and nine. Duriel Harris now 82 at a wide receiver spot for the Dolphins. With that, more 89. Woodley gives it off to Bennett. Bennett got about to the 47, maybe not quite that far. An end zone view of this play. It looks like a quick draw play here. I, I tell you, it seems to me that both teams have been studying their plays a great deal to stop the running game. He didn't get the two yards there. Woody Bennett, who played at Miami. Miami with a big win last night over Florida. Now Cephalo and Harris and Moore are all in there. Three wide receivers, third and eight at the 47. Picked off by Ken Green in front of Dorio Harris. And if he'd have held that ball, Jim, he might have been able to rob for a touchdown. Coach Hannafin told me he's the strength of their defense, Kenny Green. Knee injury in the seventh game of last season hurt him when it looked like he was going to make the Pro Bowl. Tom Arose, the rookie from Ohio State, to do the punting. Back downfield to receive Stump Mitchell and Roy Green, along with Willard Harrell. Well, neither team has been able to move on offense in their first try. A roll, a wobbly kick, coming up and taken by Mitchell. Mitchell got it to the 24-yard line. This is an exciting little performer, Stump Mitchell from the Citadel, just 5'9 and 188. Steve Shaw makes the tackle, and the Cardinals will have it after a 31-yard punt and a six-yard return. Remaining to be played, first half, no score here at Bush Memorial Stadium. Score in the early going. These two clubs both had their opportunities. Nobody's got a first down yet. Typical of a first game opening play. They're a little pensive. It seems to me both punters are rather nervous. End over end ducks, young kids in the stadium. It's going to come around. They're newcomers. They certainly are. All right, first and 10 at the 25-yard line for the Cardinals. Jim Hart at the control. That is Mark Bell in motion. And the first chance for Theotis Brown this afternoon. And Bob Brzezinski, number 59, the linebacker coming in there. And up to this point, the offensive lines haven't been doing much business for their folks. Not at all. You kind of feel sorry for them a little bit. They're going to have to break one here. Jimmy Hart's going to have to go to the air all day. The Cardinals, 5-11 last season. Miami, 8-8. 
down. Kim Bocamper in there now at right end. Bill Barnett started there today. Bocamper will see plenty of action. That's Anderson breaking out over the 30-yard line. O.J., who lives in West Palm Beach, number one draft pick, met by Ernest Rome, number 55, the linebacker inside. Let's take a look at O.J. take this one. Just sheer power coming behind his line, Workman, and he just, just shows his talent there, rolling him out. Great athlete. There are his statistics in 1980. Only Walter Payton rushed for more yards the past two seasons. Third down and three at the 32. Barnett replaces Bo Camper for the Dolphins on defense. Tilly comes in motion. The pitch back to Anderson. In trouble. A little freelancing, and it looked like he got the first down. He did nice it on his own. Action. He did it on his own. What an athletic career was. Don Besselu, number 46, on the tackle. 2-220. O.J. the Juke. Watch the cut back here. He just did this on his own athletic ability. He got the flow going away. He gets a good block, cuts back behind Brodzinski, and away he goes. On his own, he barely made it. Doug Fetters missed the tackle. It would have stopped him short of the first down. First first down of the afternoon. The Cardinals operating at their own 36-yard line. throwing Tilly down the near sideline. That, of course, Jim, as you well know, is a play they practice and practice a timing pattern. It's called the over the shoulder. It's one of the toughest plays there is. The man's going directly away from you. It has to be perfect on both ends. The receiver has to be there. Hopefully the defensive back won't knock him out of bounds. He was chucked there a little bit. Extremely hard pass to complete. Hart is one for two and six yards. He needs 71 yards to move him into the fourth spot all time in the NFL in pass yardage. Second down and 10 at the 36-yard line. Bo Camper back in on the defense for the Dolphins. Tilly in motion. Hart over the middle. Oh, and... Close, it looked Jay. like, yeah, it looked like he was going for Chris Combs, his tight end, and Ernest Rome, the linebacker, was right there, and Hart, I think, felt there might have been interference. I agree with you. Yeah. Combs' head was down for some reason. Maybe he got a finger in his eye. He wasn't even looking at it. Dave Steep into the lineup now for the Cardinals, number 84. Third down, and 10. Steve, Tilly, and Bell, three wide receivers. They put Steve on the wing left side. Hart has time. Throwing now and complete. Great pass. Dave Great Steve pass. made the catch at the 47-yard line. With him there was Gerald Small, number 48, a 17-yard pickup, Jim. Jimmy took back. He has a little bit of pressure here. The old veteran just steps in. Steve makes a great play. Look at that pinpoint pass. I don't think you want to throw in front of, in between three defenders this whole game. Great catch by Steve. Besselu did a fine job of defending there, but he threw that in the crowd. It really was on the money. Baltimore has an early lead over New England. First down for the Cardinals at the 47-yard line. Tilly going in motion. The pass comes out to Steve. Steve's at the 45, and a fine play by number 59, Bob Brodzinski. Brodzinski out of Ohio State, smart and quick, and he showed his ability right there. Did you see what they tried to do? Steve was going to throw a pass. He was going to throw it downfield. They gave away a little secret there. They may not be able to use it again today. They worked on this play yesterday a little bit. Just kind of hoping to see it go for a touchdown. You've been here the last couple of days looking at both clubs. And they've been very nice to me, allowing me to come in and watch practice. It's been tremendous. Second down and eight at the 45-yard line. The Cardinals in Dolphin territory with 6.40 to go in the first quarter. No score. Hart calls on O.J. Anderson at the 40. Down to the 37. Very close to a first down. A slashing run by the All-Pro. Eight-yard pickup, Brodzinski, 59 on the tackle. You're so
saw O.J. being congratulated by Theotis Brown. Brown starting this year in place of Wayne Morris, who has been the starter. And the key for O.J. is the importance of the blocking by Theotis Brown. Here is the measurement, and it is a first down. Fred Wyatt is our referee, former West Virginia University quarterback, and is in the insurance business. There's his crew. Tom Hensley, Ed Marion, Wilson Dozier, Dick Hantak, Vince Jacob, and Bob Wartman. Anderson has 18 yards on five carries here in the first quarter. First down at the 37-yard line. O.J. Anderson, he's got about two. Ernest Rohn, number 55, the linebacker inside with Bob Baumhauer, 73, made the tackle. And one of the Cardinals is shaken up. It's Joe Bostic, the right guard. And this offensive line cannot afford to have any injuries. The Cardinals are very thin at that position, the offensive line spot. Extremely worried about it, Jay. As they attend here to Joe Bostic, we take a timeout. This is Jay Randolph at Bush Stadium, St. Louis. Second down and eight coming for the Cardinals. The ball at the Miami 35. Barney Cotton, number 60, has replaced Joe Bostic at guard for the Cardinals. Hart to Theotis Brown in a lot of trouble. Brown has run out of bounds. There's a penalty marker down. Larry Gordon, the linebacker number 50, doing a good job over there. And the penalty is going to be holding against St. Louis. Best not to go backwards. You got to go forward, north and south. It's pretty interesting to see how tight the Miami Dolphins defensive backs are playing. I think they're rather comfortable. His head falling off. Knowing that I know you went 56 yards game. last week on that play, Fiotis, but 99 try to reverse your field up here. Let's take a look at the athletic ability of A.J. Dewey here. He's a great player. Came off the offensive line, moved back to linebacker. They play him on the line a great deal during the game. Watch his pursuit. He's not going to give up here. Look at him. They think very highly of A.J. Dewey. Seven yards, make it third and 15, back to the 42-yard line. Hart, a lot of time. Now he gets away from one man and then falls down at the 50-yard line. Coming in was big A.J. Dewey, number 77. And Hart, a little bit frustrated there, and he looks to be injured. He couldn't get out of, way, out of the way of Barney Cotton. Barney Cotton had him had his legs trapped. Number 60, Barney Cotton had him trapped. Oh, he's limping. Hart comes up limping, and the question limping. is, who will replace him? Will it be Lish or Lomax? Let's take another look at this. You'll see Jimmy Hart, number 17, dropping back from the pass. They put a very good rush on him. When he's caught in the crowd, he's caught by his own teammate, number 60, Barney Cotton. Look at him. He can't get out of the way. A.J. Dewey went right by him there. Right by him. It'll be interesting to see who they replace him with. Will it be Lomax or Lish? Both had marvelous preseason. Well, we know, who, we know who the fans want. Yes, sir. They're Neil very Lomax. fond of Neil Lomax. Great athlete. The Miami coaches said they're very sorry they didn't draft him. <laughs> I guess a lot of people are. Yes. Carl Birdsong to do the putting. Vigorito is back to receive. the rookie pressure on a line drive spiral Vigorito all the way back at the five yard line shouldn't have fielded that ball there ever and he comes out to the 15 about the 16 yard line there's an unwritten rule in the NFL never take a punt within the 10 yard line you'll kill your defensive team the offensive team just kill them Tim Collier number 44 on the tackle 47 yard punt to Jim Hart the 37-year-old veteran, John Omohundro, the Cardinal trainer working on him. Well, how about Bob Lemon, the new manager of the New York Yankees? I was just with Gene Michael yesterday, and there was a lot of 
A lot of speculation. Consternation because Steinbrenner and Lemon weren't talking. I mean, or, or Michael weren't talking. And now it's Bob Lemon. Here's a pass. Woodley outside. Great and taking it in over there. It was Woody Bennett who took it in, and Ken Green made the tackle very quickly. Pickup of about two yards on the play. Both teams have tried that play now. We won't see it again today. From the 18-yard line, scoreless game with 4-10 left to go in the first quarter. Harris, Cephalo, and Moore, three wide receivers, give to Woody Bennett. Bennett steps out of bounds as Roger Worley took a shot at him and forced him out. The game forward to the 23-yard line. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Cardinals and the National Football League is prohibited. The Seahawks leading at Cincinnati 7-0 in the first quarter. Third down and three at the 23-yard line for the Dolphins. Woodley to Nathan. And Nathan is stopped short as Curtis Greer, number 75, number one draft choice a year ago. The All-American from Michigan made the tackle punting situation coming again for the Dolphins. The Rose needs to get the fine punt here. He can't leave him in a hole now. He's got to punt it out, get it long. Don't punt it down the middle. It's one safety back. We saw Neil Lomax. Rusty Lish alongside, and we'll see who's going to come into this game. A Rose getting the punt away. Stump Mitchell at the 33. Mitchell Good got to the, about the 36-yard line. He battled the Sun. 52, Steve Shaw leading the way downfield. It's going to be the rookie, Neil Lomax, who will take over. A 44-yard punt, a three-yard return. Oh, second season and everything, but excitement now as we get to go to the wire. Jim Hart, a bruise left knee. Probably will not play anymore today. I hate to see that. Is Neil Lomax, number two draft pick, Portland State. NCAA records abound for this young man. In motion, Mark Bell. Otis Anderson, got to the 39-yard line. And A.J. Dewey, 77 on the tackle. Hart, when he was in the game, three of five in the passing department, 25 yards. See a very fine block. Otis followed his blocker. Barney caught and he knocked him out and he cut back in. Very fine block. Take a look at Jimmy Hart there. You know he's sad. His teammates are sad. He's worked awfully hard. He got a starting shot in 67 with an old friend of yours and mine, Charlie Johnson, had to go to the Army. My great friend, Charlie Johnson, played with the Denver Broncos with me. Second down and seven at the 40-yard line. Straight away. Across the 40-yard line to about the 46 or 47. Nice running by Theotis Brown. A.J. Dewey on the tackle. We've got a look here at the linebacker, Bob Brzezinski. Bob Brzezinski, they acquired him from the Rams. Look at the good blocking on him. Look at this great release. He got off the blocker number 59, Bob Brzezinski. With this 3-4 defensive line, you have to attack quick. You have to attack it just like that. Straight dive play. Well, Brzezinski is excellent against the run. He really is. First and 10 at the 47-yard line with Neil Lomax getting a great opportunity. There's his throw, and he overthrew Tilly, or Mark Bell, and coming back with it is Blackwood. Blackwood still on his feet. Blackwood still going all the way down to the 38-yard line. Glenn Blackwood, four interceptions last year. The ball thrown just too high. 
five yards on this return, and it looked like Lomax just put too much on it. In the replay, we'll see uh, one of the big problems with the short receiver, Mark Bell, Colorado State. Just, it's hard to find the man. A great play by Glenn Blackwood. His brother Lyle was recently released in the NFL. I played with him also. Look at that move. They, they expected him to go out of bounds and fall down. Never give up. That's, you just love to see that. First turnover in the game. It comes with 134 left in the first quarter. Up the middle goes Woody Bennett. Bennett, who had ankle problems and missed the last two preseason games, stopped on the play by Charlie Baker, the linebacker, 52. Blackwood had two interceptions in the opening game of 1980. He takes one away here today. And Miami really feels that they can keep Bennett healthy. He's certainly going to be a big plus for them. The officials now having a discussion about something. The sun beating down on the turf here, the artificial surface. Temperature in the low 80s. There is the referee, Fred Wyatt. Number 56 for the Cardinals, Tim Carney. to play. It'll be second down and seven at the 35-yard line of the Cardinals for the Dolphins. Dell Williams is gone. He had his finest day against St. Louis, 194 yards. Nathan and Bennett, the running backs. Cepelo in motion. Woodley. Coming out of there. Down to the 30-yard line, short of the first down. Tim Carney, 56, and Eric Williams, 55. Jim, there's the great ability of this youngster. Very mobile, very mobile. We'll see it here on the replay. He dropped it back. He split the defense open. He got the receivers covered. St. Louis did a good job of covering. But look at it instantly. Instincts. Watch, watch him. Number 16, David Woodley. He's going to bring a lot of excitement down in Miami. Stafford Mays, number 76, into the lineup for the Cardinals to replace Eric Williams. Miami 0 for 2 in third down situation. This is third and one. It's back coming, and it was Tony Nathan trying to get in there, but a great play. In underneath the pile, Tim Carney, the linebacker, made the stop. Boy, what a hit. Lee Nelson also was there. Brian. Back here. Ball on the 30-yard line. Miami starting the second quarter of play. Fourth down and one. And they're going to go. And off. Bombed in there by Woody Bennett. But it looked like the Cardinals had jumped offside. Ken Green, number 37. The free safety making the tackle. He gave the stagger count, Jay. He drew him off. He drew the big line, line and offside there. The stagger count. Encroachment call against St. Louis. It'll be a first down at the 22 yard line. In the first period, the Cardinals had the football for 8.55, Miami for 6.05. It's a scoreless game. The Dolphins threatening at the 22-yard line. David Woodling, 6'2", 204, an eight-round draft choice. That was Harris coming in motion. I know. And it is out to Harris. And the catch made at about the 13-yard line. Carl Allen on the coverage. Jim, you said he was wide open, but it was a good throw. It was an excellent throw. Watch him. You take his man in, go to the outside, the sideline there. It was an excellent throw by young David Woodley. But look at the catch. Flying through the air. Duriel Harris, what a number 82. Great athletic talent there. 
Ball spotted at the 13-yard line, second down and one. This is always an interesting call. Well, they're in field goal range here. No mistakes, no mistakes. Double tight end arrangement. And the single setback, big Woody Bennett cracks up the middle. Mike Dawson, the nose tackle, made the play. Looked like he had the first down by about a yard. He does. Tony Nathan coming back into the game along with Doriel Harris as Bruce Hardy goes out. Matt Moore also going out. The ball at the 11-yard line. Bob Greasy has been tutoring David Woodley. It's first and 10 at the 11-yard line. to the nine. Wrapped up by Lee Nelson, the strong safety. That's always an interesting call down there, Jay. I'd kind of like to see him throw more on first down. Bennett now has 22 yards on seven carries. It'll be second down and eight. The ball is at the nine-yard line. throwing out to Bennett. Bennett at the five, bumped out of bounds by Carl Allen. Bennett, a teammate of O.J. Anderson's at Miami, a free agent, a fine blocker. He has been involved in that body master's program in New Orleans and is a really remarkable specimen. Quite a specimen. Out yesterday in practice in their shorts, and he's quite a specimen. Allen made a good play there. He didn't dive for him for fear of missing the tackles. Just ran him out of bounds. Good play. Woody Bennett bench presses 400 pounds. Whoa. I can't roll 400 pounds. <laughs> Third and four. Big call. Double tight end arrangement. Penalty markers down. The throw going out. And that'll be called back. They'll call it back. Ronnie Lee took it. But it is no touchdown. Looks like Woody Bennett might have moved first. Roger Worley over there on the coverage of Ronnie Lee, the tight end, the third-year man from Baylor. There's Don Shula, 51 years old, a native of Painesville, Ohio. 193 victories in the NFL. Apologize for referee Fred Wyant's mic not working quite well enough maybe for you to pick it up. Woodley is four out of five in the passing department, 29 yards, facing now a third and nine call at the 10. Tommy Vigorito, number 32, is in the backfield with Bennett. And we've got Cephalo and Harrison Moore all in there. They're spread out, and Woodley's going to go upstairs. Woodley throwing, nobody there. Nobody there, good coverage. Jimmy Cephalo was trying to get outside in front of Ken Green, but he just couldn't do it. So a field goal attempt will be coming from Uba Von Schaman. Von Schaman, a very poised performer now in his third season. Very confident young field goal kicker in the NFL today. Born in West Germany, grew up in Fort Worth, Texas. Von Schaman with Don Strock to hold. The ball will be spotted at the 18-yard line. Twenty-eight-yard attempt is up, and it is good. The Miami Dolphins are on the board first. 13:07 remaining to be played in the first half. The Dolphins three. The Cardinals nothing. The field goal by Von Schaman makes it three to nothing. They went 28 yards in 10 plays. Ron Shaman kicks off. Another relatively short kick. That is Green. He's at the 20, 25. Bounces away from one man and steps out of bounds at the 26-yard line.
jumped out of bounds on the play by number 88, Elmer Bailey. Wasn't a very good kick. Receiver. Receiver. No, wasn't a very good. Both his kickoffs have been very short. Yeah, he was having a little trouble yesterday in practice. I, I don't see any wind to speak of, so I think he just mishit the ball. The Cardinals have lost Jim Hart with a bruised knee. They have it first and ten at the 26-yard line, and Neil Omax has 12 400-yard games in his career at Portland State. 28 300-yard games. Mark Bell in motion, and Lomax to throw. Swings it out to O.J. Anderson. Got blockers, and he got down to the 34-yard line. Glenn Blackwood, number 47, the strong safety, came around to make the play. A gain of about eight. Anderson, a good receiver for a back, not quite as talented as Theotis Brown. That's why Brown won a starting shot this year over Wayne Morris. But Anderson loves to play the game. Boy, he does oh, indeed. Oh, my gosh. Second down and two at the 34-yard line. Dolphins leading three to nothing with 12-17 to go in the first half. O.J. Anderson, a loss about two yards on the play. Bill Barnett, number 70, made the tackle. Let's go to New York for this update. Thank you, Jay Randolph at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. Young Chiefs right now handing it to the Steelers. Sidney Thornton loses the handle here, and Charles Jackson picks up the football, returns at 35 yards, with the Chiefs in scoring position, a chance to pad their lead. It stands at 7-6. Jay? All right, thank you, Brian Gumbel. As always, what a great job of updating us on what's going on, and how about that Kansas City team in the early going today? Third and three at the 33. Theotis Brown. Nothing. Nothing. And no. you wonder about that call also. Certainly do. Stop made by Bob Baumhauer, 73, and Bill Narnett, number 70. And it's punting time for the Cardinals with their rookie Carl Birdsong coming on. Birdsong went to southwest Louisiana and won his way to the job over Larry Swider here this year. Well, it's interesting that they cut Swider. He had a 40-plus yard average last year. But the big key to his stat was he had 600 yards and returns on him, and that's entirely too much. Birdsong is a two-step punter. He won't kick it as far, but he'll kick it fairly high for great coverage. Catch called for at the 26-yard line by Vigarito. No chance for the return there. Excellent punt. Like I said, nice and high. That's what the coach wants. A 40-yard punt. 10-40 left to play. First half, 3-0 Miami. This is Brian Gumbel in New York at Foxborough. The Patriots have at last busted into the scoring column going against the Colts. Steve Grogan gives to Andy Johnson halfback option, tosses it in the touchdown, mostly to Tupu. It's 10-7 Colts. Thank you, Brian Gumbel. And here at Bush Memorial Stadium, 3-0 Miami on a Von Schaumann field goal. Miami with the football, operating from their own 27. Jay Randolph along with Jim Turner. Mr. Turner, how has Mr. Shula changed his coaching over the years? I think he's become more tolerant, Jay, of individual players. But the one thing he's always had is outstanding assistance. Tremendous coaching staff in Miami. Woodley's going to put it up, swings it out to Eddie Hill, who's in the game now, and Hill is out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Eddie Hill from Memphis State picked up in a trade in July with the Rams. Pretty handy man to have around. Tim Carney made the tackle. He's number 56. That's an interesting call, Jay. Was indeed back into the game now. We've got Jimmy Cephalo. It looks like Andre Franklin, the rookie from Nebraska, is a great blocker. He's in the backfield. So it's Hill and Franklin now in the backfield as Don Shula gets to look at these two. Woodley's in trouble. Down he goes. Leading the way, Curtis Greer. Greer, the number one draft choice. Number 75, the All-American from Michigan. 
Woodley tried to use their moving pocket, but he rolled right into the rush of Curtis Greer. Look at it. He can't get away from this. That's outstanding defensive coverage. Greer was somewhat of a disappointment last season, but he really had a bunch of nagging injuries, and they like the way he's looked so far in 81. That'll help him right there. Third and 19. Cardinals in a prevent defense. Woodley's got him spread out. Throwing long downfield for Cephalo. Overthrew him. Cephalo wants a call against Carl Allen, who was stride for stride with him. Not going to get it. No, good coverage by Carl Allen. But also a good throw by Woodley. It went out of bounds. No chance for the interception. The Dolphins. Tom Arose, the free agent, to do the punting. They just traded their punter, veteran punter from last year to San Diego Chargers. He had a 42-yard average, number three in the AFC. Two newcomers doing the punting here this afternoon. Stump Mitchell is downfield. Fine punt. Mitchell at the 38-yard line. And Mitchell does a pretty good job of slashing through there for a few. He got it to the 48-yard line. Nice return, eight yards on his own. A ninth-round draft choice. Very strong little guy at 5'9", 188. The Dolphins, Ken Poole, 78 on the tackle, along with Bruce Hardy, 84. A 44-yard punt, a nine-yard return. We've got a penalty marker down and a Dolphin down. That's Terry Rabisky, the reserve back. for the Oakland Raiders some years back. Work out in their favor. I don't think they know that much about Stump yet. Of course, neither do we. He's only played in uh, half of a football game. Holding defense. I think we saw enough in defense. preseason to think that First down. he's going to be a pretty good rookie in this league. Well, you heard the call there. Robisky coming off. Try to get an update on him. Earlier, Jim Hart, the Cardinals' great veteran quarterback, injured here. First and 10 at the 23-yard line. Eddie Hill and Woody Bennett. After the penalty, the automatic first down. Woodley rolling. There's that moving pocket, throwing up against it, oh. and... Almost intercepted by Carl Allen. Oh, Allen played that very well oh, marvelous against play, the McCullough. tight end lead. Yes. Marvelous play. Cut in right underneath the ball. Allen has 15 career interceptions. Woodley now is five out of nine for 33 yards. He was trying to go to Ronnie Lee, 86, his tight end. Second and 10 at the 23-yard line. 9.41 remaining in the first half. Bennett, 34, and Eddie Hill, 31 in the backfield. Woodley throws, and it is caught. Batted up in the air by the tight end, Lee, and taken on the rebound. Calvin Fabron, 59, the linebacker. Could have been disaster. It could have been a disaster. Let's take another look at this. I don't think Don Shula taught his tight end to this ball up like that. A great effort on his part, but usually it spells disaster. Take a look at this. He was awful lucky. Oh, my goodness. Could have turned the game right there. Third down, five. Tony Nathan, 22, returns to the backfield with Bennett. Cephalo and Harris, 81 and 82 are in there. Coach Shula and his staff doing a lot of substituting on offense. That's Tony Nathan. Nathan has a first down. See how fast he hit the hole? He really did. He moved first through track. to the 37-yard line. Calvin Fabron, 59. And Roy Green, 29 on the tackle. Fine slashing run by Nathan, who really has great balance. And I guess that's the mark of a good back. Absolutely, at all times. So does Anderson. Nine minutes left to play in the first half. Three to nothing, the Dolphins. 28-yard field goal, Von Schaumann. 
Double tight end set. Hardy 84, Lee 86 in there. Give to Bennett. Bennett rolls out to the 40-yard line. He was stalled at that point by Dave Aaron, a rookie. Tim Carney, 56, also there. Bennett now has carried the ball eight times for 25 yards. Bruce Hardy comes out of the game. And Cephalo is back in. Cephalo coming to the near side. Trying to cut it back, and he got about a yard. It was Calvin Favron again, number 59 on the tackle. And really not doing too well on the ground today, Jim. Surprised at that call. Second and long. Thought they might have thrown it up. Well, I think Coach Shul and his staff are trying to check out their running game, hoping for development in that area. Not only that, Jay, they may realize that this is the youngest team Don's ever had. He doesn't want to put him under the gun right now. Little uh, get together there on the last play. They're, they're talking to each other, asking how they are. Kuchenberg there, 67 for Miami. On third and five, it is Cephalo for a first down between two men. He came up between Ken Green and Carl Allen, and a big throw there. Big Woodley throw. to Cephalo, 20 yards on the play. Cephalo played at Penn State for Joe Paterno. A big play, man. Very nimble little receiver. Threw it right over the head of uh, Nat Moore at number 89. I wonder if he was throwing to Moore or Cephalo. Well, they were both in the zone. Yeah. Stafford Mays coming out. Bob Pollard is back in for the Cardinals. It is first and 10 at the 37-yard line of St. Louis for the Dolphins. They lead it 3 to nothing. Woodley gone for the big one and batted away the coverage by Roger Worley or was it Carl Allen back there Roger was Worley. Worley Worley did an excellent job he was trying to get it to Nat Moore take a look Let's take a look at Nat Moore on Roger Worley the 13 year veteran number one draft coach years ago a great athlete actually Nat Moore becomes a defensive back right there, making sure that Worley doesn't intercept it. Good Ball play. was a little underthrown. Yes, it was. Woodley, 7 out of 12, 59 yards, and he is facing second down and 10. Bennett and Hill in the backfield. That's Eddie Hill, and there's nothing there for him. Bob Pollard. <laughs> Pollard, who played at Weber State, is in his 11th year. The Cardinals got him in a trade with New Orleans, a trade that involved the man who was really into it here with the Dolphins, Conrad Dobler, back in 77. Well, Conrad, uh, we won't talk about Conrad. It was a, a major uproar with this team. Bob Pollard, they really like Bob. 11 years, they just really like the man. Great attitude, a great leader. Third and eight. Nathan and Vigorito now in the backfield. Miami is two out of seven on the third down conversion situation. Woodley throws and it is complete. And it looks like a first down. The pass going to Vigorito, who is a good looking rookie from Virginia. Calvin Fabron on the tackle. Like that call, nice play. Split them out, runs a nice down and out. If he couldn't have been caught, it darn sure wasn't going to be intercepted. It's a good pass. The Dolphins picked Figueroa up in the fifth round. He's out of the game now, and it's Nathan and Hill in the backfield. Ronnie Lee, 86, at tight end. Bruce Hardy, 84, the other tight end, is also in there. And Nat Moore goes out wide to the left. down, hurtling over a couple of defenders is Woody Bennett. Cardinal defense stacked him up there. He didn't have anything, any place to go. He had to jump over for one. Ken Green, Lee Nelson, and Mike Dawson were all there. Second down and eight. Hardy goes out of the game. Cephalo is back in. 
Moore going out. The Dolphins are really on the move offensively. Substitutions coming in and out on every play. This is the area of the field. No mistakes. You must come out with points. Second down and six. Woodley had a lot of time throwing, and That's there it is. It is Jimmy Cephalo who beat Roger Worley, turned him around. And if you give Woodley or anybody that much time on that kind of a throw, it's trouble. We'll take a look at it again, how we'll be able to see the defensive backs. And watch how he turns Roger around. Look, at he back to the ball. He doesn't know where the ball is. Perfect pass by Woodley, six points. 22-yard play. Tom Strock will hold for Bubavon Shaman. The boot is up, and it is good. A timeout with 4.57 remaining. First half. Dolphins 10. Hard Dolphins have driven 73 yards on 14 plays. It took 5 minutes and 43 seconds. Uva Von Schaumann kicking off. Miami leading at 10 0. Roy Green at the 5. The 15. The 20. Out to the 25 yard line comes Green. And leading the way, Steve Potter, number 54, reserve linebacker on the specialty unit. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. And this is WCKT Channel 7 in Miami. Well, we want to send along our congratulations to the first winners of the 81 season. Tampa Bay Buccaneers and John McKay and his staff. Their victory last night over Minnesota in Tampa. First and 10 at the 25. The Cardinals down 10-0. There's the throw completed over the middle nicely. Well, that throw was right on target to John Floyd. The receiver picked up this week, number 86. Low match to Floyd, and the combination worked for 16 yards and a first down. It may be the start of a new era here, Jay. Lomax to Floyd. They just recently required, uh, acquired Floyd here. They like him. Yeah, Floyd was with Washington, but had played out at San Diego when Jim Hannafin was an assistant there under Don Coriel. First down at the 41-yard line. the 15 yard line the pass was intended for floyd and gerald small the cornerback number 48 was right there with it perfect coverage by small there's floyd who played at northeast louisiana lomax has thrown four times for 24 yards two completions and the one interception on that pass play to floyd i think Lomax is going to like a receiver that he can throw to when he goes down and in, in the crowd. He's going to love that. Four minutes and four seconds remaining in the first half. Miami is leading 10 to nothing. O.J. Anderson breaking down, still on his feet. Look at that. Whoa! Glenn Blackwood made the stop. O.J. would not be denied. He's very close to a first down. That brought him to their feet, Jay. Let's take another look at O.J. Watch his leg drive. Watch it slashing and cutting. He doesn't have much to work with in there. Watch the great knee drive. He's not going to give up. Look at him. You have to knock me down, boys. I'm not going to let you do that. Look at this. Look at that. My goodness. A first down. Anderson with 33 yards. The ball now in Miami territory at the 49. 320 to go in the first half. finally brought him down. Well, just when it looked like the Cardinals might have something going, problem. So another Take another look at it. Not sure he got it. had a handle on it. Watch it fly up. Better 
knocked it out of his hands. Doug Peters did a big Doug, job he there. He did. He went for the ball. He knocked it out of his hands. Gerald Smallwood had a lucky bounce looking right back up in his hand. These are the type of plays that drive you crazy. You can turn your whole season around. Ball down at the 18-yard line. Miami. First down with 3.07 to operate. There are the turnovers. Going again, working on Worley, and Worley did the job against Matt Moore. They're really going after the old veteran over there, Jim. There's no question. I'm sure they saw the Chicago films of last week. There's no question they're going to go after Roger Worley. This was a very good defensive play for Roger Worley. Let's take a look at the end here. Look at him step in front of it, put the arm up, knock it out. Number 22, Roger Worley. Nice defensive play. That also has to bring his confidence back up to being beat for Played in Missouri, was an All-American there, seven times a pro bowler. But he did have a very, very tough game against the Bears. Woodley is 9 out of 15, 90 yards, one touchdown. Cephalo going in motion. Woodley throwing and completing down at the 14-yard line to Tony Nathan. Nathan was hit immediately by Tim Collier, number 44, the extra defensive back. tried to get St. Louis's defense to rotate away from the ball. They put a man in motion. Woodley rolled out and he threw the ball back. They're definitely working on the right side of the St. Louis Cardinals pass defense. Two and a half minutes to go. First half. Nathan 22. Bigarito 32 in the backfield. Pretty good job by Bigarito, number two rusher all time for the Cavaliers of Virginia. Rush Brown, 69 on the tackle. Bigarito going out. And we're going to have a field goal attempt coming. And a timeout is now called for the two minute warning. So the two minute warning is given. When we come back, we're probably going to see a field goal attempt. 10 to nothing, Missouri. Bush Memorial Stadium, 10 to nothing. The Dolphins with another opportunity to score before halftime. Von Schaumann. Don Stock will hold. Ball will be spotted at the 21. Earlier, he kicked the 28-yarder. Uba boots it. It's good. Von Schaumann's had a perfect day. He's had a perfect day. You can't miss those insides there. You can't let your teammates down. The score now, 13 to nothing, Dolphins. Back with four and a 13 to nothing lead. A minute 57 remaining in this first half. Von Schaumann will kick off. Got a little more on this boot. There's Green bringing it out of the 10. The 20. Up the sideline, and he got it to the 29-yard line before Ed Taylor, number 45, a reserve cornerback, made the play. Kickoff is too low, no hang time. It's a good run back. He's got to get the ball up in the air. Total yards to this point in the game, Miami 140, St. Louis 73. The Dolphins are leading 13 to nothing. All their scoring coming in the second quarter. producer, the great veteran Roy Hammerman today, and directing our show, Mr. Barry Stoddard. First and ten at the 30-yard line. Neil Lomax swings it out to O.J. Anderson. And look at him shove that shoulder in there. And he moved it out to the 29-yard line. It was Larry Gordon, number 50, who forced Anderson up the sideline and out, stopping the clock with 147 left in the half. The 13 points behind, Jay, they've got to throw the ball upfield, not out to the halfback. They've got to throw it upfield to score. Second down and 11. Loss of about a half a yard on the play. We'll call it second and 11 as Pat Tilly is set way wide to the right. A good look at Neil Lomax getting the call. The rookie from Portland State. Lomax throws. Penalty marker down. The pass intended for Anderson. Out of 
at the 35-yard line. Might be holding. Usually is when that flag is thrown in there. Yep. Bentley is. Holding against the Cardinals. There is Lomax. 106. Decline pass. Third down in his career at Portland State. Dan Deardorff charged with the infraction for the Cardinals on the hold. Deardorff, number 72. Dave Steep, number 84, in the lineup now with John Floyd, 86, and Pat Tilly, 83. Lomax is three out of six, 23 yards, one interception. Taking over for Hart, third and 11. Lomax holds on, got it back to the 21-yard line. A.J. Dewey pursuing very well along with 73, Bob Baumhauer. And a minute and 30 seconds left, and the Cardinals will have to punt the football as the rookie bird song comes on. Bird song's being introduced to the league today. Loss of eight yards on the play. Garrido is the middleman deep for the Dolphins. And it is taken there by Blackwood. Blackwood returning it to the 40-yard line. Making the play for the Cardinals, Jeff Griffin, number 35. And the Dolphins still have 57 seconds in which to operate. We might see a little of the sideline drill under the general ship of Mr. Woodley. What do you think about Coach Shula putting so many substitutions in here? Well, I'll tell you, he's been keeping us going pretty good. You saw Randy Love there, number 40, come off the running back on the specialty unit. There is Don Shula. Fresh legs. Head coach of the Colts, of course, in 63. Great record. Coach the 72 Super Bowl champs. Uh-oh, Woodley dropped the ball, picked it up, and is still trying to make something out of it. Look out! Intercepted, coming back with it is Collier. And the Big Red get a break. They definitely Woodley, got a break. Woodley shouldn't have let that ball go. Once he was fortunate enough to get it back, he should have just kept it. Curtis Greer forced the play, and Collier makes the interception. He just made a young quarterback's mistake. He should have known he was in trouble. Take, just take the loss. It's too, it, there's not enough time left in the half here for this type of nonsense. A great play, play by Collier. He may be able to bring his team back into the game now. Woodley knocked him out of bounds. Collier picked up in a trade from Kansas City in 80, his 12th career interception. And now the Cardinals still have 49 seconds with which to operate. They've got time. First down at the 26-yard line. Lomax going to throw. In trouble. Not getting any protection. No. No play. He was down. Referee Fred Wyatt blowing the whistle. And the ball will move back out to the 38-yard line. That new rule to protect the quarterback. They don't want these men to get hurt when they're in a vulnerable position. I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat surprised he blew it so quick and didn't drop the flag. At the 38-yard line, the Cardinals, the clock is running. And now the Cardinals call timeout. And I don't know what took them so long, except that you have a young quarterback in there. They wasted about 10 seconds. We'll be coming back to Bush Stadium with the score. Dolphins 13, the Cardinals nothing. By the National Football League. Lomax, three of six for 23 yards. The one interception, not getting enough time. Second and 21 after the loss, back to the 38. <laughs> 18 seconds remaining. Tim Bocamper made a fine play there, or Lomax might have been able to drop down the sideline for about 20. He made a great play on one of the great tackles in the league, Dan Deardorff. Coming up.
up at halftime, Brian Gumbel in NFL 81. He'll bring you up to date on all the happenings around the NFL on this first Sunday of the 81 season. Timeout called. Cardinals have one timeout remaining with 15 seconds left. And Jim, you uh, said to me when we were away during the commercial that it would be a tremendous lift to the Cardinals if they had an opportunity to get just any points at all on the board. They had the ball all the way down at the 26-yard line. Now they're all the way back out to the 45, and they're two of six in third down conversion situations. They've quickly retreated from field goal range. Now I don't know what they can do, but it's, it's vital, Jay. You've got to get points before the half. The 13 points down, they have not looked very good at this point. Well, let's not see. giving Neil Lomax very much time to work. Let's see if he throws one up, tries to get a call, or maybe just tries to go short and get him back in field goal range. Third and 28. And it is incomplete. At the 22-yard line, the pass to John Floyd, the newcomer, he just couldn't quite hold it. Coverage by Gerald Small. That was a catchable pass. That, that is what I would put down in the book as a DP drop ball. Excellent throw by the young man right there, Neil Lomax. Those 106 touchdown passes at Portland State. Broken old record set by a man who is throwing the ball for Tampa Bay these days, Doug Williams. He had 93 touchdown passes in his college career. An awful lot of touchdowns to throw. All right, on fourth and 28 at the 45, here are the Cardinals with nine seconds left in the half. Down to the 23-yard line, not enough for a first down. That was fourth down, so they have no chance to kick a field goal. But at least they were working on something there, and that'll help Lomax. Now he'll be able to have confidence in moving down for a last-second field goal. Pat Tilly made a great catch. All pro last year, but couldn't go to the Pro Bowl game because of a late-season injury. Number 83, Pat Tilly, in my estimation, with his physical attributes, which are quite small, he's one of the better ones around. He really is. We've got three seconds remaining in this half. All the scoring has come in the second period. Field goals of 28 and 30 yards by Monshaman, and Woodley, a 22-yard pass to Cephalo. That offensive formation. Yes, sir. <laughs> Smart play. Let the clock run out. No fumble, no mistakes. Let it run out. So it's the end of the first half here at Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis. The score. The Miami Dolphins 13. The St. Louis Cardinals nothing. Do not really have much time. Lomax, four out of eight for 44 yards in the one interception. Look at the halftime statistics. And the Dolphins doing better than doubling in the yardage. Jay, I don't see Jimmy Hart on the field. Well, he sat on the bench but never moved through the first half. And as I look along the bench, I don't see him either. The Dolphins double the yardage on him. They control the ball, the clock. Lomax just needs more protection, or he's not going to be able to get anything done today. The Cardinals will kick off to start the second half. In the rushing battle, Bennett has 31 yards on 10 carries. Anderson has 31 yards on 10 carries. So the old teammates are dead even as we start the second half. Fulton Walker, number 41, is set to receive. He's the man in the middle. Neil O'Donohue will get his first work of the afternoon. O'Donohue, born in Dumplin', lives in Indian Rock Beach, Florida. Former Tampa Bay kicker, an original Buffalo draft pick. Fulton Walker at the 15. That's to the 20. Down at the 23-yard line. Leading the way on the special unit, Dave Aarons, number 58 
Cardinals. Not a bad kickoff. The Dolphins, leading 13 to nothing, will start at their own 25-yard line. There's Jim Hart now, and as you can see, he came out late. The left knee in pace tonight. Not a good sign. Not a good sign for the great Jimmy Hart. First down at the 25-yard line. David Woodley at the quarterback spot. Nathan 22 and Bennett 34 are the running backs. Tony Nathan. Nathan, who played at Alabama, is a fine receiver as well as being a fine rusher. 57 catches last season. Stopped by Charlie Baker. Alabama off to a victory in their opener yesterday. Tilly sitting down next to his good friend, Jim Hart. Second down and eight at the 27. Matt Moore, 89. Jimmy Cephalo, 81. And Duriel Harris, 83. All in there now, wide receivers. Woodley's got all day. There he is, right in the middle of the field. Duriel Harris. At the 48-yard line, Ken Green made the tackle, number 37. Need to put more pressure on him, don't they? they? They need to put more pressure on him. Let's take a look at it. Woodley had all day to throw here. Jay, maybe you and I might have been able to complete, complete this pass. He's looking at the receiver. He steps up into it. Great protection. A very, very nice catch. 21-yard pass play. First down, Doriel Harris. Got the double tight end arrangement again. Ronnie Lee, 86, and Bruce Hardy, 84. He'll do this quite often after a long pass. Put the two tight ends in there, work a little bit, then come back with three wide receivers. Another bit of mastery by Don Shula. That's Eddie Hill. Hill breaking through. One tumble. Two tackles. Pick back up. That's Calvin Favron with the football. There's a break for the Cardinals. They needed that. First turnover of the game for Miami. When it looked like Eddie Hill might have a shot to go all the way, Calvin Pravron took away the fumble. I think we'll really see a fine run here at the beginning, but right at the end when he fumbles, we'll see one of the defensive men put his hand through there and knock that ball out. It's a great run by Eddie Hill. They acquired him from the Rams. Look at him running. There it is. They punched the ball out. Number 59, Calvin Favron recovers. This could be the break the Cardinals need to get back into the game, get on the scoreboard. Oh, did you see the elbow he threw? Yep. Calvin. First and 10 at the 23-yard line. Neil Lomax handing it off to O.J. Anderson. And nothing there. Larry Gordon, who does a splendid job, number 50 right there. Number one draft choice. Oh, what a fine talent out of Arizona State. Made the play. You won't see too many people stand O.J. Anderson up like that. Great tackle. Gordon and Barnett, Dewey, Rome, Better, Blackwood, Baumhauer, Besselu, Small, McNeil, and Taylor are in there. The defense of the Dolphins have held the Cardinals at bay. Second and 11. Pat Tilly goes in motion. Lomax throwing for Tilly. He's got him. Tilly up the sideline, made a fine move, and is knocked out of bounds. There's what that little guy does best, and the folks here at St. Louis are cheering for about the first time this afternoon. <laughs> it was a great catch. We'll see it again here in a moment. The nice pass. He's got some time. Neil Lomax, number 15. A great strong arm. Watch him throw it in. And we'll miss tackle there. Step back. Budzinski misses him. Takes it down for another 11 or 12 yards. This is what they need. And they get it out of Pat Tilly. 24-yard play. Cardinal first down at their own 46-yard line. Opening moments of the third quarter. Dolphins leading 13 to nothing. Penalty marker down. Anderson bumped out of bounds at midfield. Don Besselu bumped him out. Penalty marker down. There's referee Fred Wyant. Holding St. Louis. Oh, on a run.
running play. And that's about the third holding oh. call against them today. On a running play, that's the sin of all sins. John Shula played on offense to John Carroll in Cleveland, Ohio. A defensive specialist is a pro with Cleveland, the Colts, and the Skins. Call went against number 89, Greg LaFleur, a rookie tight end who was in on that last play. He was picked up this week on waivers. Jim Hannafin, he'll be 49 on September the 21st, the head man of the Cardinals. First and 20, back at the 36. little fake and out to Wayne Morris who is in the game and Morris comes all the way up to the 45 yard line. Morris is a smart fine little back six feet tall from SMU. Delayed screen pass Jay. You don't see this too often. Just a little tip over there. He's got oh might have been roughing the quarterback. Instead Wayne runs back in. Shows his talent. Takes a heck of a hit there. Really did a good job of decoying Barnett on the play. He really did. McNeil made the tackle. It's second down and 11 at the 45. Better protection. Lomax throws for Tilly. Almost intercepted and almost into the hands of Tilly. Larry Gordon, the linebacker, doing a very good job over there covering along with Don Besselu. That's a long way for a linebacker to go. He went back over 35 yards and he was there with the receiver. Great athletic ability. Lomax is 6 of 11, 77 yards. The one interception, Wayne Morris is out. And Theotis Brown, 33, is returned for the Cardinals. Dave Steep. John Floyd and Pat Tilly are all in there as receivers, third and 11. <laughs> Penalty markers down, the throw for Tilly has overthrown. Ernest Sloan, the extra linebacker, 55, came up. And it's again gonna go against the Cardinals. They'll decline it. Fourth down and punt. Holding number 62. Declined. Fourth down. A call going against Keith Workman. Number 62, nine-year man from Nebraska right there. Had a knee injury early last year and has not quite returned to form. Been under some fire in recent weeks. Song to punt. Vigorito is back downfield. The man on the far side going for the fair catch is Glenn Blackwood. And Miami will take the football. 11 14 left to play in the third quarter. The Dolphins 13. The Cardinals, nothing. For 22, Roger Worley's been beat on it for a touchdown. 13-year veteran. He's been under a lot of fire. 1969, he shut the great Joe Namath and Don Maynard out right here in his rookie year, the first game in a Cardinal uniform. Looks like they've benched him, Jay. Yep, Tim Collier is now playing the right corner, number 44. First and 10 at the 23-yard line for Miami, leading 13 to nothing, third quarter. The throw is complete to Nat Moore. Boy, that was right on. Now a penalty marker is thrown in there. Carl Allen made the hit. Yeah, that penalty is one of the new rules in here. The referee, his determination is that he didn't go for the ball. He went for the man's head. Number 37, Kenny Green. 16-yard pass play, and then they're going to tack on the penalty. I believe that's what his call is going to be. First, yeah. We can see here Woodley's looking at his man all the way. Nice throw. He's open. But you'll see Kenny Green. He's not going for the ball. Yeah, that's, that's a dangerous shot. That was Carl Allen and not Kenny Green who was in there. Number 27. Uh-oh. It's in 
the letters to Jay Randolph. <laughs> <laughs> First and ten at the 46-yard line. Woodley brings it out. Matt Moore. And Matt is spun around, and it's Carl Allen again. Now they're getting a little frisky now. They're behind. They know they're not looking good in front of their home team, hometown on opening day. I wouldn't be surprised if a few uh, flows were thrown in here. Well, we had a real Donnybrook here back in 77. That's 20, 22 players fine here in one game. Dobler and A.J. Dewey and Deerdorf got into it, and it was like a mix master over on that far sideline. I think Conrad Dobler could start a fight in a nunnery. <laughs> Second down and 11 at the 47-yard line. Woodley's 13 out of 20, 131 yards. Stefano, touchdown! Nobody near him. He beat Kenny Green and Collier closed, but Stefano was all alone. His second touchdown of the day, 47 yards, and what a fine throw from Woodley. It was a great throw from Woodley, but he, he did some deception. He starts to roll one way, he goes back, he sees that he's covered, he stops, he sets up. What a fine play. No wider, oh, no one there. My goodness. Jimmy Cephalo, two touchdowns today. Big Kenny Green and Tim Collier on the play. This game might get out of hand real soon. Woodley, 14 of 21 now, 178 yards, one interception, two touchdowns. Von Shaman, the extra point, the hold by Don Strzok. It is good. Cephalo's caught three passes in the game for 90 yards, a couple of touchdowns. 10.08 remaining to be played, third quarter, 20 to nothing. Back patch on the back of the helmet of Von Schaumann with 51 there. There is Rusty Chambers, killed in July, and this season has been dedicated to him by the Miami team. Back up field comes Stump Mitchell on the kickoff return. And he got it all the way out to the 46-yard line. The little guy from the Citadel on the return. Elmer Bailey, 88 on the tackle. Rusty Chambers was a quiet Southern gentleman and a fierce competitor. Killed in an auto accident in Hammond, Louisiana at age 27. And he's missed by all who knew him and loved him. He certainly is, Jay. Cardinals with the football, 46-yard line. Play action fake. Lomax going long for Tilly. Couldn't get there. He showed me something there, Jay. He threw a, one of the finest passes he may ever throw, even though it was complete. Over the incomplete. shoulder. Incomplete. Thank you. <laughs> it was close to being Just complete, Just a Jim. tremendous touch. Tilly, of course, showing his all-pro ability, almost did it, but... I, I, I really like what I see in the young man. He's getting no supporting help right now. Well, as a given a cheer. Gerald Small and Bessalo did an excellent job of trying to hold Tilly at bay. Lomax is a very confident young man. Very. Great career at Portland State. Perfect size for a quarterback in the NFL. First and 10 from the 46, or second and 10, excuse me. Jay Anderson skirts into Miami fumble. territory. Did he fumble? No, the play, play is fumble. Yes. yes, right at the last second. Miami football at the 48-yard line. Now, wait a minute. Another official has stepped in, and this we see a great deal of, the officials helping one another. This is what we talked about at the New York meeting. The ball day. is down in contact. Cardinals will keep it. Now there's where the officials got together and the decision was made that the ball was down. John Shula. And when he got to get together, it was the line judge, Wilson Gozier, who made the call to Mr. Shula is having a word with him over there. O.J. Anderson, 36 yards on 12 carries. Third and five, it's 48. Pitch back 
to O.J. Anderson. And Great down he goes. What a tremendous play by Bill Barnett. He's a late bloomer, number three draft choice from Nebraska. And he's played an outstanding game here at Bush Stadium this afternoon. Great penetration, Jay. Don't forget, doubleheader today on NFL 81. More football action coming up. Most of you will see the return of the state. Ken Stabler and the Oilers and the L.A. Rams. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Hunting situation for Carl Birdsong, the rookie. Nicarito back downfield. Birdsong brings it to the near sideline, and it is at the one-yard line. Got it out at the one yard break. And going down to make the play was Roy Green, number 25. Well, it was a fine punt going to the sideline, but they certainly got a break there with that ball. A 52 yard punt by the rookie, Carl Birdsong. Timeout. 8 16 remaining in the third quarter. The Dolphins dominating the Cardinals. Jimmy Cephalo Cephalo has caught a couple of touchdown passes. He caught 18 and 38-yard TDs against St. Louis here in a preseason game in 78. He's having a fine day. Miami at their one-yard line after that fine punt of 52 yards by Birdsong. Quarterback sneak, David Woodley. Boy, he did a good job. He did a good job, but I sure wouldn't want my quarterback sneaking in there. Now the future Babylon. that kid has in front of him. Let's look at it again. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't back away here, does he? Well, he's not going to back away. But I think with the future this young lad has in front of him, I'm not too sure. But look at that blow. Might, his arm might have gone right there. Abron on the tackle, but the gain was out to the seven-yard line. A pickup of six on the quarterback sneak. Little room to operate now for David Woodley. That's Bennett. Down he goes. Charlie Baker, the linebacker. Baker from New Mexico, number 52. Made a good play. He has great quickness. They might get a break here. They force him to punt. They'll be in good field position. Third and seven coming up. More than 51,000 sitting in. Down conversion. The Dolphins have three out of nine. Incomplete. Into Drop the ball. hands of Tony Nathan and right back out again. Lee Nelson on the coverage. A catchable ball indeed. Interesting, they've done that a couple of times. Swinging the moving pocket right and throwing up the sideline. Drop ball by Tony Nathan. A perfect pass. A very gutsy call by Don Shula and David Woodley. The rookie, Tom Arose, to punt from his own end zone. Watch his back foot if he steps on that line. It's a safety. Hopefully he won't make a rookie's mistake here and step back. Stump Mitchell. Set to receive. A rose gets it away. A fine kick. Good punt. Mitchell at the 45. Down to the 40. And he got to the 38 to the 37 yard line. Fine play made by Ernest Rome, the linebacker number 55. The Cardinals will have it at the Miami 38 when we come back identification this is the NBC television network and this is WCKT channel 7 in Miami first down at the 38 for the Cardinals Neil Lomax has replaced injured Jim Hart Lomax 6 of 13 that's Wayne Morris in there now along with OJ Anderson Don McNeil 28 on the tackle down at the 35 yard line the score here 20 to nothing some other scores from around the National Football League Kansas City's come back against the Steelers in the third quarter New England by one at halftime 
second down and seven at the 35. O.J. Anderson down to the 30. Just shy of the 30-yard line. Seattle, 21. Cincinnati, 10 and half. Don Pesolu, 46, made that last play. Philadelphia handling the Giants in the third quarter, 17 to 3. Dallas, 17 to 7 over the Redskins in the third quarter. Atlanta, 14 to nothing over the Saints at halftime. Detroit with a halftime lead over San Francisco. And Green Bay still leading Chicago, 7 0 in the second quarter. Third down, three at the 31. Anderson with 36 yards on 14 carries. Anderson cutting back in. I don't think he got the first down. Was that Theotis Brown? It was Theotis Brown. Stopped short of the first down, it appeared. Ernest Roan, 55, made the play. And it's going to be fourth down and a long one. Well, they're trying to make the decision what to do. They're going for it. As well, they're Mo down 20 to nothing with 440 left third quarter. Lomax is in the huddle cheering him up, clapping and saying, let's go. The Otis Brown and O.J. Anderson in the backfield, 33 and 32. Oh, my goodness. Tremendous job done there as they gave the ball to Wayne Morris, who was in the backfield. Morris had come in, and he had no chance because of the job A.J. Dewey does. He comes in, he plays in linebacker spot on the 3-4, comes up on the line, he's always in activity here. What a great play by Dewey. You see Jim Hannafin talking with number 68 there, Terry Steve, who apparently was beaten on the play. Apparently. Oh, the Cardinals lose an opportunity to get a little deeper into Miami territory. There's 417 remaining. A frustrating afternoon so far for Jim Hannafin and the Cardinals. And a very pleasant trip to St. Louis so far for the Dolphins of Don Shula. I'm impressed with David Woodley. Oh, you have to be. Yes, to be. So impressed with his arm. First down at the 35-yard line. Uriel Harris is in as a wide receiver. Nothing much there. Tony Nathan. Charlie Baker and Dawson making the play. Now Pittsburgh is back in the lead over Kansas City, 26-20. Dawson made a nice play. Dawson, a uh, fellow who was the number one draft choice out of Arizona, has done an excellent job at nose tackle. David Woodley out of LSU. Cephalo in motion. He's got two TDs today. Woodley completing it. Over the middle, Tony Nathan. And Nathan is out to the 45-yard line, very close to a first down. Penalty marker is down. Eric Williams and Lee Nelson, 55 and 30, in there on the tackle. And a holding call against Miami. Always when a flag's in that area. But Woodley's having a field day. He's still completing him wherever and whenever he wants. Woodley uh, comes out of Louisiana, a state that has produced Odie for 79. Bradshaw. Not bad. Not bad. The call goes against John Geisler. Big Ten performer from Michigan, number one draft choice, number 79. Better, it's better protect your quarterback like that than let him get hurt. He's having a fine day. They're way ahead. I think Shula will take a holding penalty there just to make sure the man doesn't get hurt. Well, you're an expert on that because a lot of them got hurt in Denver over yeah. the years. I can tell you that. They certainly have. They're still hurt this year. <laughs> Second down and 20. Eddie Hill. Hill stepping outside, out to the 35-yard line. I will say this, Jim, though, when we were with the Jets, Mr. Eubank and his people made sure they protected Joe Namath. They certainly did. Thank God they did. One of the marvelous people in the NFL, Joe Willie Namath. 
is to get you in position to win those big games every once in a while. Well, he knew how to collect his paycheck. He knew I'd come through. <laughs> Third and ten at the 35. Nathan and Figueredo now in the backfield. Flip! Oh, headache! Coming up with the ball. Lee Nelson knocked it loose. And that's Stafford Mays with it, but it was Lee Nelson who knocked it loose and Stafford Mays who picked it up. You can see that coming. Nelson on the blitz. You wonder how a quarterback can get up from a blow like that directly in the back. This was a play that was made famous here when Larry Wilson used to do it. Well, let's take a look at it. I don't know if we want to see a blow that hard to a quarterback. He, he's not even going to see it. Look at that. Great Nelson. play by number 38, Lee Nelson. Nelson didn't have a scholarship when he went to Florida State. Maybe they'll give him one now. Oh, he doesn't need one now. <laughs> Tell you that. All right, a first down for the Cardinals at the 23-yard line. Sitting up the middle, O.J. Anderson. Jay, if they come away with no points here, it's going to be total disillusion. Bob Baumhauer on the tackle, the nose guard. Anderson and Morris are in the backfield. Neil Lomax is quarterbacking the Cardinals. There is Woodley, uh, who's being checked out by some of his teammates he after he okay. took that shot. Boy. He's all right. Second down and six at the 19-yard line. Too young to be injured. Two minutes left in the third quarter. 20 to nothing, Dolphins. Again, it's Anderson inside the 15 down to the 13-yard line. Glenn Blackwood, the strong safety, number 47, up to make the stop. O.J. Anderson, 2,957 yards in his first two years with the Cardinals. I hope the Cardinals don't decide that now is the time to establish their running game when they're 20 points behind. Max is sent over to talk things over. Clock running with a minute and 15 to go in the third quarter. Third and one. Wayne Morris for the first down. A little all-purpose back. Cracked in there to the 11-yard line. Under the pile, number 73, Bob Baumhauer. Baumhauer strong against the run. His 65th consecutive start today. O.J. Anderson now 45 yards on 17 carries. Lomax getting the signals from the sidelines. You saw that. Ball at the 11. 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. in heavy traffic to the seven-yard line. He did that on his own. Larry Gordon, number 50, stalled him. We'll see it again. You know, I think you'll see everywhere here. He did this on his own. Watch him come out, back in. Look at that tremendous balance. Just a tremendous athlete. The gun sounds the end of the third quarter. Teams march down the field at the end of the third. The score, Dolphins 20, Cardinals nothing. Assistant. The Cardinals have been shut out as we go to the fourth quarter. It is second and seven at the eight-yard line. Little delay to Wayne Morris, and Morris is all the way down to the three-yard line. Lomax almost fumbled it. He didn't he did. get it cleanly. They had trouble on the handoff, but Morris, who is a fine veteran, as I said, very smart player, hung in there. 26 career rushing touchdowns for that fella in six years. Wayne Morris out of SMU. Now they spot the ball closer to the two-yard line. Let's call it the two. Otis Brown and Wayne Morris and O.J. Anderson in the backfield. We're going to have a full house arrangement, I would guess. The whole student body will be back there. It's Morris.
Morris in the middle, flanked by Anderson on the left and the Otis Brown on the right. First and goal to go at the two, and it is the Otis Brown to the one yard line. Running out of the full house. Formation at Kansas City Chiefs pulled on Oakland a couple of years back, ran it 53 times on him and upset him. The ball now at about the half yard marker. I think I said it was first down a moment ago. It is now first down. They need this. Now they're knocking on the door. Same formation. Morris flanked by Brown and Anderson. Anderson. And did he get in? Did he break the plane? He did. Otis Anderson, and they've got something to cheer about in St. Louis. Earth points of 1981. They certainly need it. It was an impressive drive. We'll see OJ just drive it in. Goes up. Look at the crowd in there. He just puts his head down. And he goes. Took the official a little while to call that one. Roger Worley will hold. Neil O'Donohue will attempt the point. It is up, and it is good. 13 minutes, 25 seconds remaining to be played. The Dolphins 20. The Cardinals 7. Seven plays. Took them four minutes and 10 seconds. O.J. Anderson now has 49 yards on 19 carries. The kickoff coming to Walker, has trouble. Walker down at the 10-yard line. And the first man down there for the Cardinals was number 40, Randy Love. He spun him around. And then it was number 67 in under the pile to make the play, Bill Acker. There's the scoring drive. A lot of time left in this football game, and Don Shula knows it. Beating the NFC 11 straight times now. Going for a dozen today. Woody Bennett and Eddie Hill. This crowd wants the Cardinals to get the football back. Double tight end arrangement. Lee and Hardy. Charlie Baker again making a wonderful play. Baker, who has such great quickness, number 52, stops Eddie Hill after a pickup of about three. He let Eddie Hill know he was there. He came in from the backside, gave him a little halo. Next Saturday, NBC's baseball game of the week, the pennant-minded Montreal Expo. Meet the surprising Cubs, Wrigley Field. And the Yankees, now being managed by Bob Lemon, will take on the Red Sox. Check your local listings for the game in your area. On second down, Woodley has time. And it is almost intercepted. The receiver fell down. Duriel Harris up the far sideline. And Carl Allen almost took that one off. He'd have had six easy points if he'd have kept that one. His receiver went down just as he released the ball. Woodley now has completed 14 of 23. 178 yards. The two touchdowns to Cephalo. The one interception picked off by Collier. And it's third down and six. Miami is three of 11 in the third down situation. Figueredo, 32. Bennett, 34 in the backfield. Bennett out on the wing left. The give to Figueredo. Figueredo coming out. Fine play made by Lee Nelson, the strong safety. And the Cardinals will get this football booted back to them with 12-15 left to go in this game. We're going to see an enthusiastic Lee Nelson on this one. Great coverage. Comes in. Miami, I'm not too sure about the call. Look at him. Fans brought the fans to their feet. Nelson lives in Tallahassee. Rose needs a good punt now. He's in the end zone. 
First time in his career, I think. Second time now today. She's been backed up in the end zone. Exciting stuff. Mitchell is back to receive. It's a high sky, a very bright day. This crowd will open it up. Not a very good punt. A low punt, easy to field. Here he is at the 45. Mitchell threw at the 50. There's the clip. Penalty markers go down. The clip will be called against Jeff Griffin, the rookie, number 35. A 44-yard punt, a seven-yard return, but they're going to attack a clip onto it. Now the officials are coming in, and there could be a call. Now it is against the Cardinals. Definitely. A dumb mistake. Griffin, the rookie from Utah. Puts Lomax in the hole again. We had an illegal block in the back from the rear on number 35, first down. What that is is a high clip, in other words. That's the call we're getting now so often, and the holding of the open hand covered by referee Fred Wine. 11.24 to play. Back with four in a moment. The call went against him, the rookie linebacker, number three draft choice, and you'll see it right here, Jim. Here it is. It'll be uh, commonly known this year as the high clip. Yeah, it went against Fulton Walker. Cardinals first down from their own 36-yard line. 11.24 to play in the game. Play action. Out it comes, and Anderson falls down, backpedaling. I don't think that Anderson was the primary receiver anyway. I think he was caught by surprise. <laughs> Might be why he fell down. Lomax is six out of 14, 77 yards, one interception. Second and 10 from the 36. This defense of the Dolphins, of course, coached by brilliant Bill Ansparger, and his defense relies on all kinds of variations and confusion. There goes Tilly in motion. Oh, my goodness, tremendous rush from number 77, A.J. Dewey. And Lomax was really fortunate to get the pass off to Anderson, who was hit by Bob Brzezinski. Quite frankly, Jay, I think he's more fortunate to get up from that hit from A.J. Dewey. We'll see it again. Look at him. Nobody touched him. Look out. Went right around Dan Deardorff. Right by him. Third and 15. Cardinals four out of 12 on third down conversion situations in this thing. The Otis Brown and O.J. Anderson in the backfield, 33 and 32. far sideline and that is John Floyd the newcomer he doesn't get enough for the first down he got out to the 42 yard line Larry Gordon made the play and you wonder about that throw because it was never designed to get enough yardage for first down it might be the miscommunication between the rookie quarterback and a new man just acquired you know speaking of Bill Arnsparger he's taken a great deal of pride in those 11 victories against the NFC team sure he has And 351. The official attendance just announced. Vigorito set to take a punt from Carl Birdsong. Vigorito going back to the five, out to the ten, and down he goes at the 12 yard line. Again, you question him taking that ball at the five-yard line back there, but he handled it. Randy Love was downfield to make the play. 9-20. The Dolphins led 13 to nothing at halftime, picked up a touchdown in the third period. A two touchdown passes from Woodley to Cephalo. The Cardinals have scored here in the fourth period, 9-25 to play. 
20 to 7, Miami. Woodley, 14 to 23, 178 yards. Muriel Harris in motion. Woodley over the middle. Eric Williams on the coverage. The pass intended for Tony Nathan. Now that pass over the middle. I wonder about that call down this deep in your own territory. Well, I wonder about the pass over the middle, yes. But do you get the feeling that they're showing no respect at all now for this, the uh, defensive backs and linebackers now of St. Louis? They're going to throw it all time. Well, it's a surprise that they would throw that pass down over at the this point. Right. Second and ten from the 12-yard line. And coming out with it is Bennett for a first down. Bennett banged out there. The two safeties, Lee Nelson and Kenny Green, came up to make the play. But a big first down, 12 yards. Nice hole opened up for Woody Bennett, number 34 of the Dolphins. Look at the block on the linebacker. He's just slashing through. Beautiful blocking by the young Dolphin ball club. Like we've said before, if they can keep Bennett healthy, they feel they've got a good one. He's had those nagging ankle problems. Double tight end arrangement again. Ronnie Lee and Bruce Hardy for the Dolphins. That's Bennett. Nothing there that time. Eric Williams, the linebacker, number 55. Initial contact. There he is. 73. Mike Dawson. Charlie Baker's had a good day, too. He's letting them know he's in there. Baker has that great quickness for right outside linebacker, 52. Have we seen E.J. Jr. yet today? I think he's been on the field, but we have not seen him in the defensive yeah. unit. E.J. Jr., the number one draft choice. He signed late. They've been very pleased with him, but he was a late arrival in camp. Defensive end at Alabama was E.J. They've moved him inside here. Second and 10 at the 24. Woodley, a lot of time, and now down he goes. And leading the way was Charlie Baker. Baker came all the way across the field to make that play. Good example of the moving pocket there. Didn't hold up that time. The moving pocket, very much in vogue in the glory years of the Kansas City Chiefs when the little general, Henry Stram, put it in for Len Dawson. The offense of the 70s. <laughs> We're seeing a lot of shotgun these days. Not yes. with these two teams, but... Boy, you see more and more of it around the league. Everybody's trying to get the edge to win in the NFL today. Nathan and Vigorito in the backfield. Cephalo, Harris, and Moore. All three wide receivers on third and 12. Down he goes. Great rush. Woodley and Curtis Greer led the way along with Rush Brown. There they are. Rush the Crush Brown and Curtis Greer. A couple of very fine-looking young prospects. They're high on him. Running time for a Rose, the rookie. Third time for a Rose today to be punting out of his own end zone. Average 42 yards a punt in college at Ohio State. Stump Mitchell is set to bring it back. It's a fine kick. Good hang time. Mitchell at the 42. Right up the middle, sliding over the 50 and down to the 47-yard line. Mitchell is a very impressive young man. Mike Kozlowski, Kozlowski, number 40, the strong safety, making the play. Here at Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis, first and 10 for the Cardinals at the Miami 47-yard line. Neil Lomax took over in the opening moments for Jim Hart who bruised his left knee, handling the Cardinals. There's an interesting little reverse-type play to O.J. Anderson. They faked it in there to Morris going one way and handed to O.J. coming back the other way. Tackle made by Bob Baumhauer, number 73. I'm 
sure we're going to see a misdirection on this. A quick reverse, big dive, come back to OJ. Pretty good yardage on that. It's not a fumble. There's going to be a lot of question on calls like that this year. A lot of games are going to be decided in the judgment of the officials. Anderson, 52 yards on 20 carries. Second and six, Tilly in motion. Blitz, he gets it away to Tilly. And Tilly is hit immediately, but it's a first down. Boy, Lomax picked the blitz up, got the ball away in time, and it was an excellent throw to Tilly. Very impressive. Coming up next, the second half of today's doubleheader. Most of you will be watching that Houston LA game. Kenny Stabler returns. Los Angeles Rams. They've had some problems with Fred Dreyer and the front office. An interesting afternoon. First and 10 at the 33 yard line. Tilly coming the other way this time. Lomax throws too high. Trying to get it to number 86, John Floyd, the new man. Pass was just a little too tall for him. Gerald Small on the coverage. You have to have a special touch on that type of ball. It has to be laid in on the numbers or it will never be quite. I mentioned Bob Breezy earlier in our telecast. He had one of the great games of his storied career here. For Thanksgiving Day of 77, he threw six touchdown passes here. He was 15 of 23. And, of course, he is now an assistant coach for Don Shula. Working not far from us, upstairs on the phones here. Maybe one of the reasons that David Woodley has come about so quickly. And Floyd in motion to the slot right. And a throw out to O.J. Anderson. Down to the 30, to the 29-yard line. John McNeil, number 28, the corner man on the tackle. Trying to throw a little bit to the backs now. They've got to change the game plan around. They've got, they've got to do whatever they can now to score. It's coming down to a point now that you don't want to throw the thing in the bag. Third and six at the 29. The Otis Brown and O.J. Anderson in the backfield. No Max going and overthrowing. Trying to get it to Floyd. Floyd was very well covered over there by Gerald Small, the cornerback. Boy, Small has got great quickness. Oh, it's going to be fourth and six at the 29, and the Cardinals are going to go for it. Oh, they have to. Right. That's four minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the game. If they could bang in a score somewhere in the next minute or two, they just still have a shot. There is Lish, number 16, the former Notre Dame star from right across the river at Belleville, Illinois. Lish has not seen duty today. He had a fine preseason, though. Fourth and six at the 29. O.J. Anderson, did he get the first down? Very close. Looks like he's got a first down. The official on the play. O.J. hurt his right arm. First down for the Cardinals. John Omohundro, the Cardinal trainer, attending to the big guy from Miami. Willard Harrell, number 39, will come into the game to replace O.J. Anderson. So early in the game, Hart went down. Now O.J. Anderson out of there. Floyd going wide to the left. First and 10 at the 22. Tilly set to the right side. Lomax in trouble, throws it out. That's Willard Harrell. Harrell dancing his way down to the 15-yard line. Well, the rookie's pretty cool back he there with all is. those dolphins he flying around. He certainly is. Ernest Ronan, Bob Rodzinski made the tackle. Let's look at this young man from Portland State one more time. I think we're going to see what you just said, Jay. is awful cool back there. Look at that. Now, some might wonder why they didn't call within the grass. There again, it's a judgment call. They might well have called it, but they didn't. That's right. Second down and four at the 16. Lomax to the air again. Throwing. 
intended for Theotis Brown. Lomax is 12 out of 23 for 111 yards, one interception. Brzezinski and McNeil on the coverage. We've got a ground level view of this. We're gonna see awfully good defensive coverage by the Dolphins. Look at that leap, look at that, right out of the grab. Would have been an interesting call had he caught it. Would he have been knocked out? Another judgment decision on the uh, part of the official. At our meetings in New York this week, we oh. talked a lot about the new catch rule. Hours, third and four at the 16. Floyd in motion. Over the middle, he's got him. Chris Combs, and Combs is down to the four yard line. We were watching Combs in practice the other day. Jim Hart threw 10 or 12 balls to him. He dropped them all, but he caught that one. Don Besselu made the tackle, a 12-yard pickup. He's caught the one that counts. First time out. We haven't mentioned it too much, but they're playing without their starting tight end, Doug Marsh, and the great Mel Gray. That's right. We've got to hurt the St. Louis Cardinals. Time out. 2.42 left to play in this game. Cardinals. Offensive pass interference. Is that going to be the call? It's thrown in the end zone. It could be. Maybe it was a pick. It is against the Cardinals. Well, that'll hurt at this point in the proceedings. And referee Fred Wyatt talking things over. It'll come out to the 13-yard line. Let's listen. Pass interference, number 80. First down. Chris Combs, who caught the pass a few moments ago, the tight end, charged with the infraction. First and goal to go, 13-yard line. with a lot of time now in trouble throws incomplete on the near sideline at the five yard line intending for John Floyd clock stop with two and a half minutes to play coverage there by Don McNeil outstanding coverage by the Dolphins every receiver was covered oh, well I have a moment I want to thank our entire crew here this afternoon for a splendid job Nice for me to have an opportunity to work in my hometown for a change. <laughs> and, uh, our producer, Roy Hammerman, our director, Barry Stoddard, all the crew downstairs in the units. Thank you for a great job today. On second and 13, Lomax under pressure, looking now and throwing incomplete. His receiver was out of the end zone. He was trying to get it to Dave Steep. And putting the pressure on with 75, Doug Betters. Don McNeil, 28 on the coverage. Third and 13 coming. Well, they need the touchdown and then the try for the onside kick. A field goal doesn't help them at this point in the proceedings, Jim. Not a bit, not a bit. You count too much on the onside after that. Third and 13 for the Cardinals at the 13-yard line of the Dolphins. Miami led 13 to nothing at half. Got a touchdown in the third quarter. The Cardinals got theirs here in the fourth. Lomax overthrowing a little bit of a tough catch. It was a little high for Otis Anderson and marvelous coverage by the linebacker Gordon on Anderson. I'm impressed with Larry Gordon. What an athlete. Number one draft choice. Really one of the fine talents. 6'4", 230, Arizona State, number 50. Well, here's the play. Third or fourth and 13. Tilly is in the slot to the right side. Ward and Steve for the other receiver. Over the middle. Incomplete. Incomplete it through. Almost.
Burroughs picked off. The pass was intended for Tilly. He was double teamed. Thessalou was there on the coverage. Along with Blackwood. They were looking for Tilly. And Jay, the Cardinals are all coming off with their heads down. They know they've not started out with a good performance. And this crowd of more than 50,000 is beginning to head away. Lomax 13 of 28. There's Don Shula. His team wins this one. He's now going to be 25 and 0 against 10 NFL clubs which have never beaten Miami. St. Louis, Atlanta, Chicago, Detroit, Green Bay, New Orleans, San Francisco, Seattle, the Giants, and Tampa Bay. None of those teams have ever beaten a Don Shola coached Miami club. And Jay, it only puts him six victories away from the Magic 200 in the NFL. Tony Nathan carrying the football. Second game to the 15-yard line. Cardinals call timeout with 2.07 remaining. Don't forget, later today, most of you will be seeing Houston and Los Angeles. Another interconference game on this opening Sunday of the 1981 season. And of course, next Saturday, the Major League Baseball Games of the Week. The Yankees with a new manager. And also, you'll see the Montreal Cubs game in some areas. There's what's coming up. Second half of the doubleheader. Check your local listings. They have headed for the outer regions here. But this big crowd of better than 50,000 stayed and rooted on a youngster who had to stand in the breach today, Neil Lomax. Okay, and you must admit, Neil Lomax has shown some promise. Oh, no, I don't no. think these folks can walk out of here and feel bad about the future of a great quarterback in uh, Neil Lomax. It'll be interesting, of course, to get an updated report probably in a day or two on the problems of Jim Hart. And his knee has been encased in ice. Those kind of injuries, as you well know, Jim, uh, takes a few days before they can really tell what the damage is. They probably wouldn't know till Thursday. Speaking of Thursday, the Dolphins have to turn right around and play the Pittsburgh Steelers in the Orange Bowl Thursday night. Three of their first four are on the road. I think they have a tough schedule. Oh, I think they think so, too. Yes. I think anybody <laughs> thinks so. But they do have to get ready quickly for the Steelers. There's still plenty of good tickets remaining for that game Thursday night in the Orange Bowl. Woodley pitching it back. Tony Nathan breaking out. Nathan at the 40. From behind, he is pulled down at the 39-yard line by Tim Collier. Collier and Allen were in a foot race with him. That's a 45-yard romp right there, the longest run of the day. Getting a two-minute warning and a timeout here with the Dolphins leading it 20 to 7. Jim Turner, Jay Randolph at Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis. The Dolphins up on top, 20 to 7 over the Cardinals. And you know, this is not an easy place to come and play an open. No, a is. sellout crowd, and the Dolphins deserve a great deal of credit. Shula and his staff really had them ready. As usual, you could see how coordinated the players and the coaches are. He's been shuttling players in and out, no mistakes. You know what? They haven't called too much time on a young quarterback today. It's so organized. Woodley takes the ball and goes down. He's had a good day, 14-24, 178 yards, one interception, and two touchdowns. Don Shula, his 12th straight against the NFC. A timeout called. And that's the end of the timeout situation. Woodley led the club to five wins on the all-rookie team last year named the MVP, and no rookie had been named to the MVP spot since Greasy in 1967. Hart was only three of five before he had to depart with the bruised knee. And the Cardinals have had a good look at their talented youngster from Portland State, Neil Lomax. There is Jimmy Hart. Came out of Southern Illinois University in Carbondale 16 years ago as a free agent. 
and is one of the finest gentlemen ever to play this he game. He certainly is. I've had a chance to talk to him for the past two days here. I'm sure he's so disappointed sitting there and seeing this performance. I think of fellows like Hart and Greasy, what wonderful, wonderful representatives of the NFL. Woodley again holding on. And the clock now at 145, and we'll keep counting as the Cardinals are out of timeout. Third down, 11 yards. It's going to be third down. The Cardinals are going to be 0-4 against Miami, and Miami will have scored 130 points to 41 in the four games that these units have played over the years. Frustrating way to finish it for the Cardinals. Pat Tilly had four catches for 62 yards. O.J. Anderson, 20 carries for 52 yards. He had the touchdown for the Cardinals. Woody Bennett, 13 carries for 40 yards. Cephalo, the big play man, three catches, two of them for touchdown, 90 yards. Well, no one on the Cardinals was able to get 100 yards and only twice in the last 38 games has Miami allowed 100 yards to a rusher, once to Franco Harris, once to Earl Campbell. And we would assume those two could do it. And I'll tell you, that is a great tribute to the defense of the Miami Dolphins. Coach Bill Einsparger. Offense. A delay against the Dolphins. They don't mind that. The Cardinals have a tough assignment. They play at Dallas next Sunday. Play offense. The Cowboys in Washington playing today in the nation's capital. There are no easy weekends in the NFL. Uh, I know you you solidly believe that, and I that do. is the truth. A rose in punt formation. gets it away into the end zone. It'll come to the 20-yard line. Penalty marker down. 22 seconds left to go. They're going to bring it back. football with 22 seconds left and no timeout. You know, Mr. Randolph, the St. Louis Cardinals are going to surprise an awful lot of people this year. It doesn't, it doesn't look good today, but I do believe they're going to have a good year. There's that stat we referred to a little earlier. The Miami Dolphins defense. Stars all around. Including the coaching staff. First and 10 from the 20. Lomax stepping up, throwing on the run, and incomplete. On the near sideline at the 40-yard line, intending it for Tilly. Pat didn't have a chance to get that when he was out of bounds. There's Don Shula. Look at him. He doesn't look happy. Once an assistant at Kentucky and before that at Virginia. Part owner and vice president of the Dolphins. One of the fine gentlemen in the NFL. Jim Hannafin. He's had a tough day seeing his great veteran quarterback, Jim Hart, go out in the early going. But he's watched maybe his quarterback of the future, Neil Lomax. Yes. Lomax throwing to O.J. Anderson. O.J. at the 35. Still going. Still going. All the way out to the 47-yard line. Five seconds left. Larry Gordon on the tackle. That's going to do it. So, on this opening Sunday of 81, the Dolphins win and the Cardinals lose. The final score, 
20 to 7, Miami back with the Shea Randolph in St. Louis, where the Dolphins beat the Cardinals 20 to 7. The executive producer of NBC's NFL football is Don Olmeyer. Coordinating producer, Ted Masonson. The telecast of today's game has been produced by Roy Hammerman and directed by Barry Stoddard. Our technical director, Wayne McDonald. Associate director, Arlando Smith. Remember, next Saturday at 2 Eastern Time, NBC's Baseball Game of the Week will feature either the Expos against the Cubs or the Yankees facing the Red Sox. Check your local listings. Next Sunday, start your day with NFL 81 and Bryant Gumbel, a doubleheader with a featured game in the AFC Central Division, the Oilers and the Browns. And now stay tuned following station identification for the second half of today's doubleheader. Most of you will watch the Oilers again.